Saint Nicholas of Tolentino, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's saint is a saint who was known for his great love for our Blessed Lady, and through Our Lady's intercession, was able to work a number of very great miracles, including the raising of the dead back to life. He imitated our Blessed Mother in this, that he always did that which was most perfect, or that which was most helpful for the needs of soul, always putting his own needs and his own thoughts absolutely last. Saint Nicholas of Tolentino is one of those saints who had his um, time of popularity. You know that um, over the course of the Church's history, some saints were for a while, several centuries perhaps, extraordinarily popular, and then the devotion to them faded. Our saint during his heyday was named as patron saint of many places, needs, and cities, including Lima, of the capital of the Spanish uh, colony of Peru, and it was discovered in the um, uh, 16th century. From about the 16th century to the 18th century was the, was the time of very great devotion to St. Nicholas of Tolentino. And appropriately so, people were devoted to him because he was, as they say, a very great miracle worker. He was someone who was always willing to help those who were in need. He uh, was um, uh, an Augustinian friar, and he joined the Augustinians rather than the secular priesthood in order to practice a more mortified way of being uh, a priest of our Lord. And uh, during most of his life was an itinerant preacher, and then during his years at Tolentino, he was a street preacher. During that time, uh, Italy was terribly divided between the Gelf and the Ghibelline, those who followed the Pope and those who followed the Emperor. And sometimes there were, there were street fights, bitter civil wars, and all the rest of it. And during all of his priestly life, our saint was able to heal a number of these um, divisions and to bring many souls back to the Church and many souls back to leading a good and a holy life. He went where the people were, and because of that he wasn't afraid to go into the bad neighborhoods or the slums, and that he loved to spend his time there. And uh, he, um, because people used to live on the street, as they still do in warm or Latin countries, the poor people at least, I mean, he would preach in the street, and he did this with great effect. And because of that, many people who were, who were his enemies, or the enemies of God, did their very best to disturb or break up these street sermons. One man who was his enemy went so far as to organize uh, a fencing match or dueling so as to, uh, with swords, so as to distract people from the preacher. But our, preach, our preacher kept on preaching the word of God patiently, but eventually some of those words sunk in, and that same man came to confession to him and returned to the sacrament. One of the greatest miracles that our saint performed was uh, that of raising a man from the dead. He had been killed in one of these squabbles or vendetta feuds, and uh, had his, his, he, before he died, he invoked Our Lady and Saint Nicholas. Now, our saint was, of course, named after Saint Nicholas. Indeed, Saint Nicholas performed a miracle in allowing his parents, who were beyond the age of having children, to have him. So he was very connected with Saint Nicholas. This poor man invoked St. Nicholas and Our Lady before he died, and about a week after his death, St. Nicholas, Tolentino, fished him out of the river, brought him home, restored him to his family, and then heard his confession and gave him the last rite. And as soon as he had done so, the man announced, well, he was ready to go back to eternity again, and he died, and his body decomposed in an instant, and all that was left was a skeleton, and it was a skeleton that was buried with proper Christian burial. He did the reverse of that miracle um, concerning an animal, and this is the reason why he is the patron saint of sick animals. That is to say that his whole life long, he um, abstained from eating meat, and very often he would fast to honor Our Lady on just bread and water. 
Well, because of ill health towards the end of his life, his superiors were concerned about him, and they wanted to get him to eat meat. So one time, uh, they cooked up a chicken and put it in front of him. St. Nicholas blessed the chicken, and several things did something like this. He blessed the chicken, and then the chicken arose and got its feathers back and strutted off. So, so as to demonstrate that according to God's will, he really didn't need to eat a chicken in order to have good health. And Our Lady told him that if he just dipped a little bread after he blessed it in water and ate that combination, it would heal him, and it did. So in Augustinian churches today, bread and water are blessed as a remedy for the sick in his honor. St. Nicholas of Tolentino. Ours wouldn't be to work great miracles like that, but we always are coming across occasions where we might be able to draw someone by patient perseverance back to the sacraments, or to reconcile Catholics who are feuding amongst themselves. Let us ask St. Nicholas to make us imitate his example, and be willing a little bit to put ourselves out, as he did always, for the sake of soul. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.